What's up guys? It's your boy Amboy, back with another video. Today we are gonna have a look at the TPC pre-patch notes. Basically it's a patch that comes out usually a couple of weeks before the real TPC launches and you can actually level to 70. And we are assuming that the patch notes from back in the day is going to be the same for Classics TPC. As always, a sub, a like, and a comment down below would be greatly appreciated. I do also stream on Twitch if you're interested in that. You can come check me out. Anyways, let's dig into it. The first awesome feature in patch 2.0.1 is the looking for group interface tool. Of course, this is footage from retail. So when you queue, it won't summon you directly into the instance but this will help you make groups. In TBC, there will be made summon stones outside every instance and raid that you can use. So you do not need to have a warlock needs group to speed up the process of getting into a dungeon and getting everybody there. We've all struggled finding people for five months, especially in the later phases of a game. So I think this feature will be a very nice addition. One thing that could come to mind is that what, will they add cross realm looking for group or will it stay realm wide? Personally, I like it realm wide, but I wouldn't mind the opportunity of queuing with friends on other realms so I could play with them as well. But only time will tell. The next big feature coming with the pre pads is of course that all players will have their talent points reimbursed and they will have access to new talent trees. This includes the 41 point talents and several new abilities will also be added for all classes. So, weeks before coming with this pre-patch, you will actually be able to test the new abilities, play around with it, and have some fun with it. And test it in raids. So, the specs will be a little bit awkward because it's just because it's just temporary specs until you hit 70. But some examples for Warriors example would be something like this. As an arms warrior, you would actually be able to get death wish and sweeping strikes plus five in flurry. Whereas a fury warrior, which has been the meta so far in classic, they won't be able to get bloodthirst and death wish, but they will get bloodthirst and sweeping strikes. What specs are going to be best during the pre-patch? I don't know. I just made these for the fun of it. Anyway, moving on. Another big change for melees in general is that weapon skill will be changed to no longer reduce the percentage damage lost due to glancing. Instead, the player will gain 0.1% to their critical strike rating per weapon skill against monsters above their level. So weapon skill will not be as important as it has been in vanilla. One of the greatest things about TPC is of course the implementation of arenas. The arena. Once the pre-patch goes live, your current honor tolls will be reset. You will be able to display your highest lifetime rank type. This means rank 1 to 14, obviously. So if you grind to rank 14, you can finally have that sweet Grand Marshal title at all times. PvP rewards are no longer unique. And marks of honor earned for battlegrounds are no longer turned in for rotation or honor. They are now used in addition to honor board points in order to purchase rewards so for instance when you need season one gear off pieces you'll need to turn in marks plus honor to get them on top of that of course two new arenas will be available in three different modes two versus two three versus three and five versus five players can queue from goblin NPCs in stormwind ironforge orgama on the city and gatitzan another nice addition is that in pvp Crowd control effects will last no longer than 12 seconds instead of the full duration, with a chance of a heartbeat resist. You all know the feeling when you've been sitting in a sheep for 30 seconds. This will happen no more, my friends. Also, hunters can now set traps in combat, but it takes 2 seconds for the traps to be armed after putting them down. And last but not least, players will no longer lose faction under the influence of mind control or the gnomish mind control cap. So the way I understand this, as an alliance, you will not be able to get War Chief's Blessing anymore. So I guess, enjoy War Chief's Blessing while you can. And look forward to the day where you don't have to get it anymore as an alliance. I found this funny patch note as well that said, you will no longer die when Fain Death is finished shelling. So if you go AFK after Fain Death as Hunter, you will not die anymore. 
And on top of that, shape shifting will now break the noggin fogger elixir effect. I'm sure you guys have experienced running in a Warzone Gulch and you see a druid running the flag who's either a skeleton or super small or both at the same time for that matter. This will be fixed from this patch onwards. So that's quite neat. With TBC, a new stat called Resilience will be introduced as well. Resilience reduces periodic damage and chance to be critically hit. In this case, with 370 resilience by 9.39%. On top of that, it also reduced the effect of mana drains and the damage of critical strikes by 18.77%. So what this does to the game as well is that you actually need to PvP to have great gear. You can't just come from PvE and then enter arenas and be a big boss. Maybe some can, but... In theory, this is what it means, right? You need to have P good PvP gear to be a good PvP PvPer. So it kind of starts splitting up the game in two, right? Whereas in Classic, if you had like full tier 3 piece gear for VHDs, you can really pump and kill stuff. But with TBC, this won't be possible in the same manner anymore. With the patch, Blizzard is always also adding the, an advanced character sheet UI, which now displays your stats more precisely so as you can see here usually you would use an add-on to see these stats but with this patch you won't need an add-on you can see it straight away so for instance you want to see your melee damage your haste rating your enemy armor reduction from armor penetration items your expertise your hit rating and so forth and of course this applies to spell power and stuff as well so that's a quite neat little feature they're adding in the game here Another noteworthy point to make about the TBC pre-patch is that all the profession-made items will now have been given proper stats based on the current expansion item level progression table. On top of that, tailoring, leatherwork, and blacksmithing have all had their creation time reduced. So that means level 31 green items takes at least 8 seconds, level 31 plus blue items takes at least 15 seconds, and level 31 plus purple items takes at least 25 seconds. On top of that, you can't just go enchanting and have level 1 dis enchanting and then you can disenchant everything. Now you actually need a specific level to be able to enchant. So as you can see on the table, skill 1 equals, you can disenchant level 1 to 20 items. Skill 100 equals up to level 35 to 40. And the lowest is, of course, skill 225 equals, you can do level 60 to 65. So... To do 65 to 70, you will most likely need max enchanting to disenchant it and make profits that way. Anyway guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I sure learned a bit or two about the coming pre-patch. As always, a like, a sub and a comment down below would be greatly appreciated. I do also stream on Twitch if you're interested in that. You can come check me out there. Anyways, as always, have a damn great day.